Welcome to Hartman Math. Today we're going to take a look at the sum and difference identities or formulas for sine and cosine and tangent. Prior to that, we have a pretty severe warm up, so go ahead and pause here, work through problems one and two, where we're finding solutions on the interval. Careful, we do have a multiple angle problem right there. Number one, we solve for cosine of 3t. We get cosine of 3t is negative 1 half. Then if we think in terms of unit circle for cosine, that's going to be in quadrants 2 and 3. And 1 half is going short and then tall. So we're talking about the pi over 3, so 2 pi over 3 and 4 pi over 3. So 3t equals 3t equals. Uh, because it's a multiple angle problem, we're going to do the plus 2n pi's. Divide everything by 3. Uh, might be beneficial to have this be 6n pi over 9 because we are going to start plugging in values for n. Plugging in 0, 1, and 2 to get 2 pi over 9, 8 pi over 9, 14 pi over 9 coming from the first one. And then 4 pi over 9, 10 pi over 9, 16 pi over 9 coming from the second one. Were this a back of the book answer, it would probably be this. Just be listed in order like that, but not all that significant. Uh, number two, we're going to have to use some identities on that one. So if we realize that this one's cosine over sine, so do everything in terms of cosines and sines, then we can add them together by creating a common denominator. Uh, if we multiply both sides by, by sine of x, or actually uh, think of this as the identity, this is a Pythagorean identity, that's 1, so 1 over sine x is 2. If we then take the reciprocal of both sides, sine x is 1 half. And again, from 0 to 2 pi, sine is going to be positive in quadrants 1 and 2. Uh, the y coordinate being half, so we're going to go long going on the x, and then the 1 half being the short going up. So that's going to be a pi over 6 and 5 pi over 6. All right, sum and difference formulas for sine. If we're talking about the sine of one angle plus another angle, we're going to use u and v as our two distinct uh, angles there. Uh, the sine formula works out to be sine of u times cosine of v plus cosine of u times the sine of v. And notice that the sines match here. And then if we do difference, it's the same thing where just if that's a minus and this one's a minus. Cosine's a little different. It's cosine times cosine, and then the sine being opposite for there. So if that's a plus, that's a minus, sine times sine. And then cosine u minus v, again, that becomes now a plus. And then tangent, a little bit more complicated. It's a fraction. Uh, tangent of u plus v is tangent of u plus tangent of v divided by 1 minus their product of the two tangents. And then we can see if this one's a minus, then that becomes a minus, and that one becomes a plus. Right, example 1. Uh, we're going to evaluate a trigonometric function. We're going to find the cosine of 105 degrees. And that's not one of our unit circle uh, angles, but it is a combination of a couple of our unit circle angles. So go ahead and pause here. And just kind of consider how do we create 105 degrees as a sum or difference of angles that we are very comfortable with. Probably the easiest way for us to go is that being 45 degrees plus 60 degrees. So we've got the cosine of the sum 45 degrees plus 60 degrees. Now we are not allowed to distribute and just say it's cosine of 45 degrees plus the cosine of 60 degrees. Functions do not distribute. But we do have the formula that says cosine u plus v is going to be cosine u times cosine v minus sine u times sine v. Now we'll think about what our unit circle 
is going to tell us for each of these quantities. Cosine of 45. So the x coordinate at 45 degrees, root 2 over 2. Cosine of 60 degrees. So the x coordinate at 60 degrees is 1 half. Minus sine of 45 degrees, the y coordinate, also root 2 over 2. And the sine of 60 degrees is the y coordinate, root 3 over 2. So we'll substitute all of those in. Root 2 over 2 times 1 half minus root 2 over 2 times root 3 over 2. And then if we just multiply these together, and then we're going to see we are going to have a common denominator. So we're going to get root 2 minus root 6 all over our common denominator of 4. Now, a little bit of warning if you're looking at the back of the book for that kind of answer. It's going to do something very strange, which is to factor out a root 2. So it'll be like root 2 parentheses 1 minus root 3. Factor that out. It's a very strange way of approaching it in this case, and I do not recommend it. Example number two, tangent of pi over 12. So once again, this time we're in radians, but that's not one of our uh, key angles. So maybe we gotta think of how can we create pi over 12 from a couple of the angles that we know. Well, it's pretty small, so I'm thinking we probably wanna use subtraction this time instead of addition. And so if we're thinking in terms of what we have, like how about like 4 pi over 12 minus 3 pi over 12. That's 4 pi over 12, and that's 3 pi over 12. That gets our 1 pi over 12. It's not the only way. We could have done 3 pi over 12 minus 2 pi over 12. Those, we, we both, we know those as well. So there's a couple different ways we can go. But anyway, here's our u, here's our v. So we're going to go tangent u minus tangent v over 1 plus the product of those tangents. All right, let's take a look at what we have. Tangent being the y coordinate divided by the x coordinate. Uh, pi over 3 being the coordinates 1 half comma root 3 over 2. So when we divide them, the 2's are going to cancel. So we're going to get root 3 minus 1, 1 plus root 3, times 1. And if we simplify that, clearly that's going to become um, 1 plus just root 3. Root 3 times 1 is just root 3. But now we have a root on the bottom, so that's definitely not ideal. Uh, so maybe in order to fix that, you can think multiply the uh, top and bottom by the conjugate here. Conjugate's often a good way of fixing a binomial. So the conjugate being 1 minus root 3. And maybe to pause here, take a moment to go ahead and multiply that out. So if we do our combined like terms, we're going to get negative 4 plus 2 root 3 divided by negative 2. If we then distribute the division, negative 4 divided by negative 2 is positive 2. Positive 2 root 3 divided by negative 2 is negative 1 root 3. And we don't need to write the 1. So that is in simplest form. All right, another type of situation, we've got example number 3. Uh, find the sine of u plus v, where we don't actually know the angles u and v, but we know something about them. So we know that the sine of u is 3 fifths, and we're given a clue about what quadrant it's in, and then we've got tangent and a clue about what uh, quadrant that's in as well. So what we're going to want to do is sketch angle u and angle v separately, and the sketch is going to provide all the information that we need for doing the sine u plus v problem. So we're going to sketch this one in quadrant 1, where opposite is 3 and hypotenuse is 5. And then it will become necessary to use the Pythagorean theorem to find the missing side. Okay. 
And then over here we've got v between pi and 3 pi over 2. So quadrant 3 for our sketch for v. And since it's in quadrant 3, both the opposite and the adjacent are going to have to both be negative. That's really important. And now Pythagorean theorem to find the missing hypotenuse for that one. All right, so now we're ready to do sine of u plus v, which we know the formula is sine of u times the cosine of v plus the cosine of u times the sine of v. So it's not the sine of 3 fifths. The sine of u is 3 fifths, so we're going to replace this with 3 fifths. Cosine is adjacent divided by hypotenuse, so that's going to be 4 fifths plus cosine of, I'm sorry, co that's cosine of v, my apologies, so cosine of v is over here, uh, negative 8 over 17 is going to go there, cosine of u, the 4 fifths that we were talking about before, is going to go here, and the sine of v, negative 15 over 17. Now maybe a little calculator work, negative 24 plus negative 60 all over the common denominator of 85. So our answer is negative 84 over 85. Application of a sum formula, write the algebraic expression for the sine of the arc sine of x plus the arc cosine of x kind of a typical cal uh, calculus type uh, uh, type of problem that, as far as an expression um, that we're going to practice on here. So I think what we're going to want as our, here we've got our u and our v as these are angles, u and v, is let's sketch those out. So we've got two different angles that we want sketches for. So for the first one, uh, so this is x over 1, x over 1, opposite over uh, hypotenuse. The Pythagorean theorem would lead us to the missing side being the square root of 1 minus x squared. And then for v, where it's uh, very similar, but it's our cosine of x. So now x is the adjacent, and 1 is the hypotenuse, and then that's going to mean that uh, the square root of 1 minus x squared is going to be your opposite side. All right, so let's look at the formula then. Sine of u, uh, we already knew that one, so sine would be opposite over hypotenuse, that's x. Cosine of v, adjacent divided by hypotenuse, that's also x, so x times x, plus cosine of u is the square root of 1 minus x squared over 1, and the sine of v is the same thing. So clearly we've got x squared. If we multiply two identical roots, we're going to get what's underneath the, uh, the radicand, 1 minus x squared. We've got x squared plus 1 minus x squared. So the answer is 1. Example number five, verify an identity. So what we're saying here is that essentially that the tangent of x minus pi, you might think of that as a phase shift in terms of a graph. How would that be the exact same thing as the tangent of x? All right, so in verifying an identity, we want to pick one side to work on. Clearly the more complicated one. It is a tangent u minus v situation. So we'll approach it that way. So tangent u minus tangent v over 1 plus tangent u times tangent v. What is the tangent of pi? 0. It's the y-coordinate divided by the x-coordinate where we're straight left. 
at negative 1 comma 0. So 0 divided by negative 1, that 0, that 0. So we're going to get tangent x minus 0 over 1 plus 0. And that just simplifies to be tangent x. It matches. We verify it. Example 7, solving a trigonometric equation. So some of the skills that we had already learned probably not going to be very beneficial here. We could try to get it equal to zero, but there's no factoring that can be done where that would actually be beneficial for us. Um, there's really nothing else. There's no identities that can be used. So I think what we should do is do what it's actually saying, which is to do the cosine of the sum and the cosine of the difference. So cosine u plus v, cosine u minus v, where we've got our u and our v, and a separate u and a separate v. All right, so here's the first one, cosine u, cosine v, minus sine u, sine v, plus goes here, and then the second one goes here, cosine u cosine v plus sine u sine v for the second one. Now let's see if we can simplify. Specifically the cosine of pi over 2. Straight up the x-coordinate. That's 0. Sine of pi over 2. Straight up the y-coordinate. That's 1. So that's going to disappear. This becomes 1 here. Cosine of 3 pi over 2, that's straight down. Cosine would be 0, so that's going to disappear. Sine of 3 pi over 2, straight down, the y-coordinate being negative 1. So gone, negative 1 sine x, and another negative 1 sine x makes negative 2 sine x. If we isolate, sine of x is going to be negative 1 half. And we are solving from 0 to 2 pi. So quadrants 3 and 4 where the y-coordinate is short, so long and then short. So we're talking about 7 pi over 6 and 11 pi over 6. That's it for today. I will see you next time.